Hi, welcome to Notes 9. I'm David Leedy from lotusnotebook.com. Episode 6, A Blueprint to X Pages, The Cliff Notes of Web 2.0. Okay, before we get started here, a uh, quick disclaimer. Um, uh, we're talking about pre-release code, and there are no guarantees from IBM that any functionality presented or discussed will be in the final shipping product. Uh, I'm not really talking about 851 in this episode. I'm talking about uh, CSS frameworks, but uh, I don't want to ever go back to the 85 client. Uh, once I've been on 851, you never want to go back. So we're going to be sh using the 851 client, but we're not really talking about anything new. Um, okay, so what is a CSS framework and why do we care? Well, they, they speed up development. Um, they do a lot of things for you. They're already compatible with major browsers. Uh, they allow you to, you know, put your items on your screen um, because most of them use this grid system. And, and that's really the key that I'm talking about today. There may be other frameworks that do other things. Uh, I'm really focusing here on placement of items on the screen. Okay, types of framework. We got Blueprint, uh, UI, um, the 960 grid system. Even one UI, which comes with notes, is a uh, CSS framework. Um, this is, I think, a, a possible best practice, but we'll see if, if this gets adopted to use these frameworks. Uh, now, what are you looking for in a framework? Well, first of all, you need to avoid uh, the, 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 this hash symbol here um, because this is kind of like a unique identifier. This in CSS says only use once on a page for this item. But X pages will change the item's name uh, because you can use items more than once or so. So this is not something that you want to rely on. You want to use uh, CSS frameworks that uh, have the, the period for, um, and again, I don't really know the terminology uh, in CSS. I'm not a CSS expert, but this is just a like a class selector here for the period, I believe. Um, now, there's some debate about frameworks. Um, you know, are they good? Or are they bad? Do you really learn CSS? Do you learn the frameworks? But, you know, why invent the wheel um, if it allows you to get things going in a quick manner um, go for it uh, and one of the reasons I chose the blueprint framework um, which is found at blueprintcss.org is because it's smaller it's much smaller than one UI uh, which is very good uh, but you have to really dig into one UI to to learn it um, so blueprint gives you a grid some type, type some typography and uh, some forms um, it has a, a wiki with a great cheat sheet on it with how to do some of these things so if you go under their wiki and tools and resources you want to make sure you get the cheat sheet okay so um, let's just dive right into the demo okay so we're gonna move kinda of quickly here uh, first thing in talking about this blueprint or this grid system let's take a quick look at IQ Jam the, the new product from Elguji because I they're using blueprint for this and what's it giving them it's giving them the spacing here's some grids you know here's you know they placed a button they, they've got their logo here so blueprint is allowing them to do this um, uh, from what little I know about how they do their work. So let's look at what I've done, which is much uglier. But again, similar concept. Here's a, light, light, a left sidebar. Here's the main content area, some boxes over here. So the key that I'm trying to get across here is just how this may help you in, in getting your placement, especially if you're not a CSS guy, which uh, I am not. Um, oh, one thing I did want to show you here, because I can. Um, this is what it looks like inside the notes client. So uh, here's a little bonus for you, anyone who's watching. Um, X pages in the notes client. Uh, yes, I'm excited. Anyway, um, okay, so let's see how this works. First, we're going to look at the CSS. Okay, style sheets and yeah, my database. Okay, style sheets right here. Okay, so IE print and screen blueprint gives you this. Uh, if we look at this one, this is what you download from them, and it's compressed. You know, there's no comments here, though there are there are versions with comments in it if 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 you want. But they, this one's try to make look small, is much smaller. Um, this is the one I've added. Application CSS. This is where I would put any any overrides for any non-blueprint stuff. Um, obviously, I've got nothing going on here, but I could imagine this would grow pretty quickly. Finally, the theme document, which is what makes everything work. We're calling the screen, the print, 
if it's IE, get user agent is IE, then we're going to use this IE override one, and then finally uh, the application CSS. And where, do you, where does that uh, get tied in? Under your application properties, under X pages, application theme right here. Okay, again, this is similar to the One UI thing, um, and there's a web standard theme uh, that comes with it as well. Um, I just prefer something a little more simple. Okay, so how does this work? The first page, X Main. If you look at this, this is the page. This is this page right here. But I haven't done a thing on this page. It's all custom controls. There's nothing on this page that is not from a custom control. This is the header control. Here's the left sidebar, the main content area, and the right sidebar. And if we look at the source, we can see this is a custom, that's what this means, custom control. We've got these controls inside a panel with the ID of container. And that's a key thing for Blueprint. Everything has to be inside this container. Um, Okay, so let's look at these custom controls. If we look at the header, here's the panel. If I can get it. Okay, and the style. I'm telling you, it's going to be 24 wide. So that's going to give me my width for the page. Uh, the subhead, you know, you can still do other things in here. Here's another panel that I'm saying prepend for notice small. It almost sounds like football play. But notice is this color box that's going around it. Pre-Pen 4 means it's starting over here. Um, and this is slightly a smaller font than, than what's up here. Uh, I haven't quite gotten into the typography of Blueprint yet, but there are some things there to help you. Okay, so that's the, the header. If we look over here, this is the left sidebar. Okay, which now that's just my name for it. Uh, but there's no pre-Pen, it's just Span 4. So it starts from the left and goes over four columns. The right sidebar over here, it's similar concept. Oops. Span four last. And what this basically means is this is gonna be the this is saying it's the last column. So we don't need to do a prepend thing uh, here. We're gonna just do span four, it's gonna be four columns wide, and it's gonna be the last column, you know, in that container. And then of course the main content area, which has a span of 16. Okay, so these are my custom controls. Now, when I went to, to make page two, okay, this is the custom control for page two, and then in the X page for page two, I'm just dropping on the exact same things, and this is the only one that's that's being changed. Now, there might be other more clever ways to do this with embeddable areas and more advanced things, but I'm not too concerned with that uh, right now. We'll get to that another day. Um, but that's basically it. So now I'm making pages, and all I'm really doing is, you know, for the different pages, uh, I'm working in a custom control with a very small area that I can focus on. And as long as I make the page and I throw in, you know, this extra stuff on it, it'll come with me. And here again is it is page two, you know. and of course if I change it in one place, it'll change for all the pages. And that's the demo. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, um, my contact information is right here. Um, thank you for your time.